Welcome to Community Connections. I'm Nicole Snyder, Coordinator of Communications and Media Partnerships for Clay County District Schools. This month, we are talking about safety and security, including the district's new police department. On the show today, we have a familiar face, Superintendent of Schools, Addison Davis, Chief of Police, Kenneth Wagner, and Assistant Superintendent of Operations, Dr. Michael Kemp. So we have a lot to cover today. Let's get straight to it. Superintendent Davis, can you just catch us up on what's happening with the police department since it was voted on in February? Yeah, so, you know, openly in December, the school board was, was trying to be proactive to identify what we could do from a district level, how we would spend the millage money to the community so gracefully extended to our school district to, to continue to protect safety and security within our school district. In that time, they explicitly asked me for multiple facets and dimensions and options for me to put together, me and my team to put together in order to present about how we would spend the money related to guardians, how we would spend the money related to local law enforcement agencies, and what we would do with hardening that project. So on the, after December, December and January, me and my team worked collectively to put together five options. And of those five options, you know, uh, we, we built a, a, a comparison analysis financially and also through our, through our workforce to include the inclusive models of the school district leading the police department with variations of having the sheriff's office, town of Orange Park, and Green Cove inclusive of those as well in order to present so the, so the school board can make an informed decision. Coming to January 29th, we had a workshop. In those workshops, my staff presented to the school board. And uh, the next day, the school board uh, put it on the agenda to have a greater discussion at the school board meeting in February. And from that, the school board has elected to move with uh, Part B and Plan B, which is an implementation of the Clay County School District launching and implementing our own police department why, you know, at the elementary level and also at the secondary level, while continue to have interlocal agreements with the town of Orange Park and Green Cove Police Department. I will openly say that, um, you know, while some, some decisions we make as leaders, uh, you know, sometimes aren't as popular, but the school district and the school board didn't make this decision in a, um, you know, in a split second. They looked at all the analytics behind it, looked at all the benefits, the pros and the cons, and really came to a solution where they believe that we can continue to offer a uh, model that can continue to protect our students at the same time protect the working conditions of our adults. Yeah, so a huge decision for the school board and also another huge decision is the man standing right next to you, uh, Police Chief Kenneth Wagner. Can you tell us a little bit about why you chose him? Why do you think he's the right person for this top position? You know, at the end of the day, when the school board elected to, to make the decision, I went immediately to try to find the right person to lead this work. And we knew that it had to be someone that, uh, you know, had a great history and rich history within Clay County, someone that is really solid in law enforcement and someone that truly understood our community and our schools as well. And I will say that um, after all the application process and interview process, this was the right man for the man for the job. You know, he has he brings over 20 years of law enforcement to our school district, 1,400 hours of you know explicit training related to protecting our children and our community. He's a graduate of the FBI Academy, and at the same time, he was the individual that has led all of the work seven or eight years for Clay County District Schools related to the Resource Officer Project. And um, you know, this hire has uh, Sheriff Daniels' fingerprints all over it because when Sheriff Daniels came in the same time I came in. He saw and approved that this individual was the right man to, to lead the work and um, you know we only get uh, you know we only evolve as uh, you know related to how well our next hire has you know is and this individual has really allowed us to to move in the right direction and have the right leader to protect our students. So I know you're just chomping at the bit to get your <laughs> airtime. Tell us about uh, your new position and the transition to it and just what you've experienced so far. So far it's been a relatively smooth transition. We have a lot of applicants. Um, right now we have a little over 100 applicants and uh, I'm constantly vetting them. And as of today, I, I have about 20 people that are uh, highly qualified with probably on the average about 22 years law enforcement experience. A lot that come from around Northeast Florida, from Central Florida, and even as far away as Washington, D.C. for officers that are coming down to uh, raise their families and continue serving this community because they know the, uh, the benefit of this community that they can serve and live and all of them are highly dedicated and each of us have a, a strong conversation about the dedication of this community up to including that they would lay their lives on the line in order to protect our students, our faculty, and our community members while they're uh, in the performance of their duties at schools. 
Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about the process for um, those school resource officers applying? What kind of certifications do they need to have? What kind of background checks do they go through and, and the training that they're going to have to go through this summer? A very good question. Uh, each of these officers, it's, it's a typical uh, law enforcement type application they uh, put in. And of course, they have to have two years law enforcement experience prior to even uh, reaching my desk. And uh, it's, a, it's a very strenuous uh, vetting process that has a, a thorough background investigation. Um, and we have uh, FBI agents that are retired that are doing those background investigations to make sure that we have good qualified applicants that what they say in their applications is what they've actually done. Um, in addition to that, we have to find out if they're able to uh, perform the task as a school resource officer. Do they have the tenacity in order to uh, serve our community and, and with vigor and with integrity? Uh, the training is going to consist of a myriad of things because after Stoneman Douglas, we had to uh, institute mental health training. So that's going to be one of our top priorities in, in dealing with and, and exercising those mentorships and recognizing students that may have some mental health issues that we are properly vetted and that we have those skills in order to identify, refer for services, and reach out to our partners like Clay Behavioral that we get either it's a family in need of services or a child in need of services. And then when it gets down to the law enforcement aspect of it, they're going to get vigorous training with regards to active assailant training, um, defensive tactics, de-escalation tactics, um, a myriad of things that we can go on and on and uh, We'll just let yeah, it, improve it, it, it sounds like uh, you know uh, a, a lot, and it is a lot. And I, and I said openly, this is a tall order, but I, I, am, I continue to be amazed about this individual's ability to recruit first-round draft picks to this organization. We know openly. Uh, I, I've said this before. You know, the Clay County Sheriff's Office the, has been a beautiful partner in our work. They will continue to be a beautiful partner. But as it relates to what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to do is make certain that we have a resource officer on every one of our campuses every single day, 100% of the time. And through this, you know, they'll they'll work to be well in a well-organized department that's focused on visibility, that's focused on prevention, enforcement, and, and also engagement. So excited about this work and excited about what he brings to the table for Clay. And we don't want to leave out Dr. <laughs> Kemp down here. He's been a huge um, asset to this team and also a trailblazer when it comes to getting this all getting this all together. And so, can you just talk about your role in all of this and kind of what you've seen over the last couple of months? Sure, from an operations perspective, when you think about uh, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Act and what that requires, you know, a lot of people think about the SRO, the armed officer in the school, but there's so much more to that. And we're looking at facilities, we're looking at facilities hardening, uh, there's the mental health component uh, that, is, that is critical. But just from a facilities perspective, if we, you know, once we have the officers in our schools, our police department is stood up, we're taking a look at our facilities to make sure that we do the hardening projects necessary to ensure the best safety that we can. So when you think about our facilities, the, our average facility age is approaching 60 years old. We have the newest facility, Discovery Oaks, that's not even a year yet, but we have some that are approaching 100 years old. I think it's important for everybody to understand that the uh, our facilities weren't built for this level of threat assessment today. So um, Clay County has a challenge, and the challenge is we have a lot of work to do to get our facilities uh, prepared for the projects that we need to harden it, projects such as uh, perimeter fencing, uh, single point of entry, access controls, we're talking about additional camera surveillance, ad additional lockdown devices, um, alert, alert systems, um, all those things that are required to keep the, uh, the, the our campus as safe as we possibly can and with the challenges that we face today. And, uh, yeah, and I would like to add on to that is some of the applicants that we had are SEPTED, in which that is crime prevention through environmental design. And I would like to work collaboratively with uh, Dr. Kemp and his team in order to make sure that what we do is that the hard to be these schools fall in line with some of those practitioners. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the money that's needed to harden schools, but also a lot of money goes into putting up this police department. Can you talk about the financial aspect to standing up this police department and how that played a role in the decision? Sure, and all of us can have this conversation at, at this table. You know, ultimately, you know, if you go back to Clay County District Schools, you have the last time that we had resource officers in our senior and junior high schools was back in 2007, 2008. 
and from due to finances that wasn't carried upon and we you know we transitioned to 2009 to 2017 18 where they were all we only had resource officers at our high schools and junior high schools didn't have coverage and elementary in our school district has never had coverage and in those years we spent an average around fifty thousand dollars per officer to be able to implement that plan it was last year when I brought the board to expand the Clay County Sheriff's Office within our schools because they do a beautiful job for us. And uh, in that expansion, the you know the cost is, the cost actually it just went up. You know, we, for for 12 schools and 19 employees, you pay an average of $101,000 per officer, which ultimately around the state you see the averages between you know you see schools between 50 paying $50,000 per officer up to around 65 to $67,000 officer. I've said openly is that I'm not trying to challenge anyone's numbers. If that's what it takes to implement this work, then uh, you know, then then you know, there needs to be additional uh, assistance, maybe from the BCC to the sheriff. But from our perspective, you know, the school board really truly had to look at, uh, you know, what the actual cost was and determine if the cost was, you know, reasonable or related to what we're trying to accomplish and affordable. You know, many thanks to the community members who extended the millage. That millage is going to allow us to stand up a resource officer in every one of our schools which would be the first time in history in clay county this year what we've done is we've, we've placed resource officers in our junior high schools and our high schools and we, we took on the guardian program to hire school safety officer guardians to protect our elementary schools what we'll do is you know the the initial cost was going to be around you know closely around six million dollars and uh, for us to do that a year ago we just didn't have the money because categorical fundings didn't allow us to do so because 80 percent of our budget is is it taken up by all of our employees and i'm just not willing to to go and, and make cuts for that project hence the reason we found money to, to initiate the guardian program so as the six million dollars comes into play that's the first year with whether it's us or the sheriff's office or the town of orange park or green coat there's going to be capital costs to let that come to fruition the first year however you have to look at the reoccurring costs and we have the opportunity to save up to 1.2 million dollars a year by owning this process so um, I, I think there's a lot of benefit and $1.2 million is a lot of money when you're talking about resources for schools, resources for teachers to address, uh, you know, uh, hardening of our structures, to, to, to address, you know, all of the safety projects that we need to do in order to, uh, to make sure we have the safest environment. Anything from, from Kim? Just to, just to add that it's a, it is a multi, it's a collaborative effort between the police department, our office of school safety and security, as well as facilities. So anytime you have limited limited funding and limited capacity to do things, it's imperative if we're fiscally responsible because it's more than just putting an SRO in every school. Uh, I, I personally believe that that's a critical component to, to physical uh, safety and security of the, of the sites. But if we're going to make some great gains in this effort, it's going to be on the mental health and early identification and the social services that work early on to, to identify students to create relationships with them from all facets. So when we're limited in funding, it's important that we're as fiscally responsible as we can to not only have the armed officer in every school, but also have the facilities hardened with such the need that I already described. And then you have uh, the mental health component, which is really uh, a great opportunity for us um, to move forward. One of the things we were looking at when we looked at all the options for uh, this initiative was we wanted to follow an or the Orange County model. The Orange County model was we'd stand up a police department that would provide additional support to the interlocal agreements uh, and their interlocal agencies because, quite honestly, SROs and schools can always focus on everything. This gives us an opportunity to make sure that we use our dollars wildly and that we can spread it amongst the three-pronged approach um, that's necessary to, to, to identify and make sure our students sure. are safe. And, and one of the things I'll say, and I'll transition back to you, I'm <laughs> sorry, is that uh, I want the community to understand, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, my job is to be an instructional leader and to make sure that we have systems and processes every single day to, uh, you know, accelerate the learning opportunities for our children and prepare them to be successful. But at the same time, there's multiple facets as we understand that safety is one of our greatest priorities. And I have two daughters that attend Clay County District Schools. And as a leader, as a father, you know, safety is one of my most sacred priorities. So when you look at this, you know, if, you, if we had a perfect world, openly and honestly, uh, you know, I would love for the town of Orange Park, the Green Code, and the Sheriff's Office to be in every one of our schools. But to be honest with you, this, all the stars just didn't line up. And multiple attempts and opportunities were extended. 
and it just didn't work. So at the end of the day, you know, my job was to go and seek and hire an individual that understood our community, understood our core values of our families, and understood the vision and mission of our work, and hence the reason bringing on this young man to make this happen. When we talk about the 1.2 potential savings, we also have a point where we will not only have a resource officer in every one of our schools, but we will have guardians as well. And then we saw in Parkland that Parkland didn't to a point where not just one officer is going to be able to address an active assailant. So having more than one individual on campuses will allow us to have, you know, a greater opportunity to address an undesired behavior. Mm -hmm. And moving forward in this time, let me know that this uh, opening of school is just around the corner. So we have a lot of parents probably asking, how is this going to happen in the next couple of months so quickly? Um, you guys had a great partner that's come on board. Uh, can you talk about former Sheriff Rick Beasler and, and his work with you guys? Sure. You know, coming into this and, and understanding that uh, through the board's direction that I was going to have to stand up this police department, uh, you know, not only seeking a chief of police that understood the, the mechanics and the work, but I had to go identify an individual that can give us 100% of his time that truly understood how to develop a budget, to make sure that we are uh, building relationships for interlocal agreements, to make certain that we understand hiring standards, to so look at all the processes related to building a police department in an efficient, in an efficient effective manner, and that's bringing on former Sheriff Rick Beasler. And, uh, you know, he is, you know, I had a chance to meet with him, you know, to, to talk about aspirations for building this, uh, you know, based on the decision of the school district. And he, uh, you know, he can give us all his efforts and energy, and he has, you know, a 12 year sheriff here. So he brings rich experiences and knowledge, and I'm excited to, that he's going to be able to help us, you know, drive this work and continue. And I know that, that uh, you know, Sheriff, you know, Chief Wagner was all an instrumental part, uh, you know, working with Sheriff Beasler, and he can talk a little bit too about who he is, what he brings to the table, and how it's just a plus for us. Yeah, my, my experience with this. Uh, from the sheriff's office was that uh, uh, an, an integral part of a law enforcement agency is an internal affairs investigation. So, and that's basically receiving complaints or praise on officers and, uh, and identifying should there be an allegation of misconduct. That that was my role, and I was the only investigator with Clay County Sheriff's Office from 2003 to 2008. So that's a very strong integral part about maintaining transparency and an integrity of a law enforcement agency. In addition to that. Sheriff Beasler was the uh, sheriff who afforded me my first opportunity to start in the uh, SRO program in our juniors and senior high schools. And at the time that I went into it, unfortunately, we had only uh, SROs in the high schools. So I had a myriad of experience with him. He was a mentor to mine. And I'm very, very pleased that he is on board with us. And he's somebody I can reach out to at any time and call him. And uh, he is, because he is a mentor, he may not have been charged the uh, school district because it's a friendship of mine that I've had for many years, and he was my sheriff for 12 years. Sure. And uh, Dr. Kemp, from your side, you have a new face joining your department soon, uh, next month. Can uh, you talk about John Ward and his experience that he's going to also bring to this uh, department? Well, yeah, we're, we're really excited about uh, Mr. Ward coming on. You know, he, he ran Clay County's emergency management. He's going to come out and take the uh, take the place of Mr. Bruce Harbin, who who earned his retirement. He deserved sure that. He did a great sure job for us. Uh, but he's going to come in and serve as our director one in our, uh, in our safety and security office. We're looking forward to what he can bring. Uh, it's um, Like I said, it's, it's a multi-pronged approach. And part of that is the processes that we have in place for safety and security, and uh, all the drills, all the practice that we do with our principals, all the procedures that we have in place. So to have someone like Mr. Ward coming in with his, uh, his experience running emergency management with the entire county, it's just, it's just going to be a big benefit to uh, Clay County District Schools as we welcome him and uh, look, I'm really looking forward to his vision for, for the future as far as ensuring that our, our, teach, our school based administration teachers are ready to protect uh, the school. And I would like to add on to that, that it's going to be a collaborative effort with the safety of the school district under Mr. Ward as well as the police department and one of my first round draft picks already was one of the officers that was working for the sheriff's office who actually conducted all those drills and did those site safety security measures and he is coming on board as one of the lieutenants so um, it's going to be an exciting time it's going to be uh, we're going to usher in a new era for the uh, district schools with a brand new police department that a lot of individuals that are absolutely willing to serve and uh, stepping up to the plate there's great things to have. Great things to yeah, have. I agree. Uh, I agree. And so a lot of parents and community members have attended Listen and Learn meetings this month across the county that 
you, Superintendent Held, along with um, sure. Police Chief Wagner and Dr. Kemp's been a part of that too. Um, can you just talk about the results from those meetings? What's the feedback? What are people concerned about? Yeah, so the biggest thing is that when we come into the Listen and Learns, we have a, uh, you know, a, community members just want to know the facts and a lot of misinformation, inaccurate information. And one of the biggest things of concern was, was is that A, that, that these individuals weren't going to be highly certificated and have the same credentials as any police law enforcement agency that, that throughout the state. And uh, we were able to, uh, you know, address that and let them know that we are seeking individuals who are not fresh out academy, but have been in law enforcement for a minimum of two years. In addition to that, I just want to make certain that the community wants to make certain that these individuals truly don't have, not only have the skill set to enforce the law, but they really have the will set to be in uh, K-12 education. So that's one of the priorities we're actually seeking with our applicants. Have they been in K-12 education or post-secondary education? And can and can they build the relationships necessary, not only with our staff, but our children as well, and be able to help and assist? I will tell you, it's nothing but positive uh, feedback after our presentations. At a presentation because they actually see the the rationale behind the school district decision and how we will stand up in an effective and efficient well-organized department. Okay. Well, one of the outcomes um, for me when I see individuals come into the listen and learn so they come in with one seem to be one frame of reference and it's really the focus about the police officers in the schools but it's real satisfying to see that they get the correct information. They find out that it's really more than that. It's really about facilities, facilities hardening, uh, everything we're trying to do from that perspective, as well as one of the most critical components, and that's the mental health aspect. And so it's just so much more, even though it's a critical part to have the officer in the school, it's just so much more than that um, as far as our obligations and requirements for Marty Stone. Yeah, you know, one parent came in, uh, I think last, you know, uh, one of these sessions and said, you know, Mr. Davis, I was coming in not, not on your team with this, but uh, after the, the listen and learn with, with accurate information, you're now on probation with me. So uh, we're moving individuals in the, in the, in the, in the right direction and uh, the biggest thing is for us to work collectively with uh, every division with this organization, also with the interlocals and make certain that we have the singular goal of protecting our children, whether you are the Clay County Sheriff's Office, Town of Orange Park, Green Club Police Department, School District Police Department, we're all here for the same things and that's just to, to work to protect our community and it's just, we're, this work will not be done in isolation. And as Dr. Kim said, it's going to be, it's more than just enforcement, it's about mental health, it's about behaviors, early warning indicators, and ultimately building relationships and trust within the community and within our schools. Mm -hmm. And we talk about trust, to wrap up, can you talk about how you're going to be transparent through this process? I know we've been posting a lot of yeah. stuff to social media, sure. you've done these community meetings, I'm um, going to continue to post to our website. Uh, talk about your dedication to that. So at the end of the day, we want to make certain that the community is apprised of every step along the way, through the hiring process, through, um, through every time that we make a, a, a sergeant, lieutenant hire, every time, and then once we totality finish hiring every one of our resource officers, but also with the expenditures. We want the community to see and have access to our entire budget. You know, because that way they can understand and see where the millage money is, is going to, how it's going to be used, and how it's directly linked to protecting our children. So along the way, we'll continue to uh, update the board of where we are financially, where we are with the hiring process, where we are with enforcement. One thing we're not going to do, if, if a student breaks, and I'm sorry to speak on your behalf, Chief, if it's, in my expectations, if a student breaks the law, then what we are not going to any way, shape, or form uh, not address that. So whether it's through a civil citation, whether that's through a uh, potential arrest, we will address it with, a, with the appropriate and right and correct um, consequences through this department. So I'll get monthly updates through Chief Wagner about where we are with that implementation and that will be, continue to be used to, to identify how we break under, you know, cycles of undesired behavior with our children and give us a better focus of what you know we need to do to infuse learning mechanisms in our school to help our children make the right choices. And I think another segue on that is um, one of the Florida statutes is 1006.13, which specifically talks about how you can handle uh, uh, petty offenses in our schools, and that we the law enforcement branch of the school district as well as administrators work collaboratively together in order to keep students in schools and not facing consequences through the legal system. So that is going to be a, a, a continuing collaborative effort from day one until uh, infinity. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for being thank here. You. As thank the you. superintendent mentioned, that information will continue to be pushed out through the district's website, oneclay.net, as well as our social media channels, so make sure to follow us, One Clay Schools. 
So next month, Superintendent Davis will be back in this seat asking <laughs> questions to our new executive director of the Clay County Education Foundation, Michaela Buchanan, along with the board president. See you next time.